Hi, my name is Christina. I'm your librarian here at Christina's Bookshelf, and today I'm going to talk to you about the Impossible series. Uh, this is one of my absolute favorite BDSM series out there. Like everything about this, every book touches a different subject. Every book is just unique, but they all align to each other. Uh, Goodreads and Amazon will say this is a standalone. They are completely lying. I mean, if you read it as a standalone, okay, but you're going to miss so much if you don't start from the beginning and just kind of go the premise of the impossible series there's pretty much a group of fbi agents in new york and that whole unit is into the lifestyle and so it's interesting to kind of get to know all of them to see how they work see how they move and i loved every minute of it i'm going to seriously like ace ventura my way through the entire series give you um the main characters in each a little synopsis and we're going to move on so that we can get to dexter's story because oh my gosh like over a year have i waited for this book the first one in the series is monster this is with sean and claudia neither one of them are fbi agents but this gets us started into the series you can also read impossible which is sean's point of view on the story. I would read Monster first, then read Impossible. The premise of this is that Sean and Bradley are into the Westies, which is a gang in New York, and Claudia is a pediatrician. How did she get involved in all this? Well, Sean got shot, Bradley went and kidnapped her, and bada bing, they're now going to be in a room together while she fixes Sean. Stockholm Syndrome? It's a very interesting story. Go check it out. Book number two is Clayton and Rose. Clayton is in the first book, Monster. He is the FBI agent that is brought in when Claudia escapes. Is let go? Hmm interesting to help her and Sean in the situation that they are in and I love this because Rose is like I just want a one night stand Clayton's like I felt something and this is when Clayton becomes who Clayton's going to be for the rest of the series when he comes into this he's not a BDSM master but he becomes one and it's a great ride to find out how he gets there number three is Rogue this is Sharon and Derek Sharon was Clayton's partner in the first two books see how this is going to work Derek is the club owner of Decadence, which is a BDSM club in New York. Right now, Sharon is going in undercover to butt Derek for drugs that are being smuggled into the club. Uh, little does she know, there's so much more to the story. She goes in saying, I'm going to be a dominant. Derek says, no, you are a natural submissive, and things get hot and heavy really quickly. And it's great watching Sharon uh, deny who she really is until the moment she doesn't. Night. This is one of my absolute, absolute favorites in the Impossible series. This is a very dark read. The subject matter of kidnapping and torture and rape uh, is very heavy in this. So if those are things that you can't stand, I would highly not recommend reading Night. You can skip it and go on to the next. I mean, you're gonna get tidbits of their story throughout, but if this is a big thing for you, like I said, skip it, move on. You will be okay with skipping a book. However, if you are okay with the darker reads and this is something that interests you, great 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 story I love Smith James he is one of my favorite doms and throughout this entire series here's how it happens Sharon does the bust of decadence uh, there is a woman that's just kind of like hanging out very scraggly very horrible looking Smith tries to get who she is she doesn't remember who she is takes her to the hospital what they find out is she has been kidnapped she has been tortured she now just kind of comments herself as fuck toy that's all she knows and so he has to bring Lydia out of that mentality and bring her back to life and how it happens at first I was just kind of like excuse me this is kind of what she's escaping but at the same time it's what she needs from somebody that's very responsible that cares very much about her and is just not taking her for granted once again this is a dark read so don't step into this one lightly mentor this is a novella um, night it's very very dark also mentor novella for night master this is Reed and Katie Reed is FBI unit in New York who goes to Chicago to help with the mentor case somebody had to mentor the person that uh, kidnapped and did everything to Lydia and so this is where this comes into effect. Katie is being haunted, is being tracked down by the mentor. Reed kind of comes in and saves the day, swoops her off her feet, but oh my god there's Dexter Scott who has been in love with Katie forever and this is when we really get to meet him and fall in love. Um, if you are into big kind of like mind trickery stories Julia Sykes kind of takes on like a Kitty Thomas where she has the weird twists and turns and gets your mind really thinking when it comes to Master. I mean, I was did not see the ending really at all. There was so much foreshadowing, but you just can't believe it. That's not where this is going to go. And it was just such a great and enthralling and just kind of like mystery, suspense, romance, BDSM, everything tied into one. So good. King, this is Javier and Charlotte. Charlotte is Derek's sister from Rose. Charlotte was sold by her father to the Latin Kings in kind of a deal and a good faith bearing. And Javier, who is undercover with the FBI, kind of takes her and says, this is mine. Charlotte has wanted to always be kind of like the suburban mom. I'm going to be this. I'm going to be that. I'm going to have nothing to do with the ties that my father and my brother are in. I want nothing to do with it. Sorry, Charlotte. 
things are the way things are gonna be. I loved this because Javier has been deep, deep undercover, and we've seen him a few times in different stories uh, with Clayton and Rose. He really plays a big part. Charlotte does a great job of bringing Javier back to reality because he's been undercover so long, he kind of is starting to have this Latin Kings mentality, and he shouldn't be having that. Decadent Christmas is once another little novella, and it's so freaking erotic and sexy and wonderful. If you're going to read in order, I recommend reading this, whether you're, you know, it's Christmas time or not. Go ahead, enjoy. It's fantastic. The next one is Czar, which is also a novella, and this is Dimitri and Alicia's story. You will meet Dimitri in Rogue and Alicia, and you're going to wonder, how the hell did she get into this position? Well, with Czar, you're going to know. This is also really kind of dark, and it takes the place of kidnapping, brainwashy kind of story. So if, once again, these are triggers for you, don't read it, but it's a very, very good story if you can get past all that. Next is Crusader, which is Hugh and Clara. Clara we met all the way back in Rogue when Sharon was undercover, and she is a dominatrix, and this is one of my favorite women in any story I have ever read. She is so strong and so head short and everything, but some something happens at the end of King that she just can't get over. She is NYPD, she decides to go rogue, heads over to England, and is going to take out Dimitri all by himself. So Kennedy, who is the leader of the FBI group, sends Dexter over to bring her home, but she kind of talks him into things with him being in the state of mind that he is in to stay and help. Well, they run into MI5 agents, Hugh and Finley, and they are also on the same trail as Dimitri trying to uncover this bliss, which is a rape date drug. Clara, like I said, is a dominatrix, and she meets Hugh, who is a very big dominant. So it's very kind of like, clash, who's going to be on top? How is this going to work? But she has sunk to such a low that she needs Hugh to bring her back up. And I loved the dynamic between these two. And, you know, the accents that I got to play with while reading this, because when I read it and I say, oh, here you are, I'm going to pull that out, and it's going to be so much fun. After Crusader, we have Prey, which is a novella, which is an update on Sean and Claudia, and I love updates. Neither one of them is in the FBI, so they kind of don't play into a role in any of this throughout. So having them like kind of come back and say hi to all of us was a great, great treat from Julia Sykes. The next one is Highlander, which is Finley and Alicia's story. Alicia! I love having her come back. I love that she finally gets to kind of explore exactly what BDSM is after Dimitri. I love the dynamics between these two. I love that they're both kind of like, Finley is like, I want revenge. I'm going to take you down, Alicia. And Alicia's like, I'm just trying to live. You know, like, have you? do you know my life? Do you know what I've been through? She's trying to be so strong, but she is not strong at all. And he's trying to get to her. And at the same time, he is not strong in a completely different way. So they have to build up together. Mm. I love it. And I love me a Scottish brogue. The next one is Centurion. And this is Kennedy. Kennedy, the leader of the FBI unit, finally has his story being told. And it's very very intriguing because his story is kind of a lost love from the past and what happened was miscommunication like the biggest error in any relationship years years later here comes Miss Karina back into his life and they kind of have to like work through what happened in the past and the same thing happens in the present and I was so mad because did you not learn anything next we have Dex which is a novella and this says this is everything from Dexter Scott's point of view that has happened in every major book that he's been in so this gives you another idea a little bit since everybody has been wanting Dexter's happy ending here you get to see him completely fall apart and become just a shell of a man and it was heartbreaking but at the end like the last couple paragraphs so much hope which brings us to hero the last book of the impossible series with dexter scott and chloe so we have chloe who is this bdsm romance author kind of like by night journalist by day author by night uh she has this very creative mind that gets her in all sorts of trouble because she doesn't stop and think about the consequences she's just like oh this would make a great story i'm gonna do xyz and dexter's like what are you doing like a through X is such a bad idea, and you're just focused on the YZ portion of this. Like, this is why you need me. And she's like, I don't need any kind of saving. The situations that this woman walks into, she needs some saving, and she needs some punishment, and she gets both. Goes and does, like, scenes in the BDSM world, but she doesn't want to have sex due to an event that happened with her ex-husband. Once again, this is going to get a little bit dark, so if you can't handle that, skip past it, because Dex's story is so great. I mean, this is so, just, like, everything I've been waiting for. There is this instant, and when I say instant, I mean instant Instantaneous connection with Dexter and Chloe. It is, I am not a submissive, and Dexter says, the vibes are coming off you. And he gets her into a state that she's never been in before. And it is 
breathtaking. I just could not believe the chemistry that happened so fast with these two. I mean, Dexter really needed it, and Chloe has really needed it. All of it to come together the way it did, like I said, it was breathtaking and beautiful. And my heart has been so catastrophically broken through all these books, especially after reading Dex and seeing his point of view on things. I was just like shattered, my heart on the floor. I'm pretty sure I cried a little bit through Dex because I have been in love with this character so long and I wanted to see it go a certain way and every time all of us fans are like, Julia, this is what we want. She's like, I hear you, but no. How it comes out though is so much better than any of us could have ever possibly dreamed about. So what I'm going to do for you is I'm not going to leave a link to every book down below. I am going to link you though to Julia's Amazon page and I am going to link you to her Facebook page. The Impossible series is one of my favorite, favorite BDSM stories. They all ravel and they all go together and you get in depth with these characters. It's not just a little skim off the top and so much BDSM, no. Erotica, thrilling, suspenseful, just mysteries and mind trickeries. Um, you have such dark, dark subjects that have to come to the top of the surface because these are things that happen in real life. And Julia takes such a wonderful time and turning situations around and making them like this, this beautiful, beautiful thing. And so that you're not just sitting back thinking, oh my gosh, this is the worst thing that possibly ever happened. No, these books are going to be some of the best things that ever happened to you if you love the world of BDSM. Please, please give them a try. And I read every single one of them at least multiple times. I got an advanced copy of Hero. Um, I read through it once. And then I went back and hit some other things that I like. Because Dexter says some great, great things. If you love nerds, he's like one of the biggest nerdy geeks out there. He's a big, burly FBI agent nerd that likes to play on his gaming system. And we all know that sexy geeks are the thing right now. For me always have been. So pre-order Hero. It will be out soon. I promise you, you are not going to be disappointed if you haven't read anything from the Impossible series. Start now. If you've liked what you've seen here, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please also like and you are free to leave a comment. I do like to talk to people and I will answer you back. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I will leave those links down for you below. If you have an arc or a story you'd like me to read and review, I will also leave my email address for you. The Impossible series by Julia Sykes, the newest book coming out soon, Hero, which is Dexter Scott's story. Bye. Hi, my name is Christina and I am your librarian here at Christina's Bookshelf and I'm doing another author spotlight and the author I am putting in the spotlight is Tanya Sands. I am doing this because I feel like I have waited for my entire life for book four of the Chaser series to come out and it's finally happening. So I'm going